Hello everybody, and welcome to something a little bit different. Today we're going to be playing through Gone Home. It's, from what I understand, something of like an interactive story. Not more so than a game, but just as an explanation of the kind of experience we're going to be having. It, it's a lot more like an interactive story or adventure. I don't really know much about it, except for that a lot of people really like it, and I probably should have played it many months ago. But I'm hoping to go into this relatively unspoiled regardless, so let's just see what happens. Hi mom. Uh, so I got my ticket home from Europe. I get back on June 6th, but it's a really late flight because that was the cheapest, so it gets in at midnight. But don't worry, I'll get a shuttle from the airport so you don't have to pick me up. Like, really seriously, you don't have to. Okay, so, love you. See you soon. Bye. Got home from the airport, maybe? Seems to be raining outside. I would say I should bring in my luggage, but I don't know if I can do that. Caitlin Greenbrier, Portland, flight 270, June 6, 1995. I can't seem to interact with it, so I guess we'll just look around a bit more. Hold right mouse or left shift to look closer. Right mouse. Oh, oh, I don't need to look that close. Kitty, I'm sorry I can't be there to see you, but it is impossible. Please, please don't go digging around trying to find out where I am. I don't want anyone, mom and dad, to know. We'll see each other again someday. Don't be worried. I love you, Sam. Alright. Door's locked. Both doors are locked. Alright. Where would I put the key? Uh, probably under the mat? Maybe? Can I crouch or anything? No. That's just a zoom. Anything? I have a cup. I don't think I'm gonna do anything with the cup, so we're gonna put it down again. What do we got here? A bunch of Christmas lights and a Christmas duck. Hey! Hey! I'm trying to put you down nicely. Well, that's as good as it's gonna get, I look, I guess. Got the house key though, it's fine. Alright, are there any other lights I can turn on? There's a lamp. Helps out a little bit at least. Um yeah. So I guess we're just gonna have to explore the house since it seems like nobody's home. Wellspring movers. What? Boxes in the kitchen, eight. Master bed, five. Child bed, six. Library, ten. Office, four. Two televisions. Continued on attached worksheets. Terrence from Dry Creek to Arbor Hill. Is that where we are? Dear Katie, so much has changed, even just since you've been away. We moved into this house. I'm in a new school. And my big sister being gone for a year doesn't make it any easier. It doesn't feel real. But I'm not gonna let it phase me. I used to tell you everything, and if I can't do it in person, because you're off gallivanting around who knows where, I'll tell it to this journal. Just like I was talking to you. So, is Sam my sister? We live together? I don't know what that is. Towels? Pretty much, yeah. That's what you would expect in there. Um, hmm. Let's see what's over here. Bunch of junk. Tissue box. What is that? 
Oh, I can examine objects. Interesting. Directions to work from the new house. Nothing else in here? Looks like we got like a palette, color palette and stuff for the new paint. What a junk. Nothing important though. Alright, um, let's check over here. Closet. Closets I can get. Janice, senior conservationist. I don't remember what my name is. Am I Janice? Over the Alps, a novel traveling game for two to six players. Interesting. Put that back. Goodfellow High School. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else in here for me to look at. Unless there's like something on the back of the door. No. We're good. What was my name again? Let's double check. Caitlin. Caitlin Greenbrier. Alright. Uh, let's check this side first. Get a good look at everything in here. Read itinerary. Ooh. Katie's departure to Amsterdam. And then I came back I don't want to inspect the pen. I just want to, I just want to look at it. So I left in 1994, and I re returned in 1995. Looks like Sam, Daniel from the old neighborhood called. He wants to come see the new house. Call him back. Mom, Daniel's a total weirdo. The only reason I ever hung out with him in the first place is that he had a Nintendo when we were little. I mean, yeah, it's a pretty legitimate reason. Are there any messages? Or is that on here? Sam. Sam. Hello. Sam. Sam, where are you? Really? I need to talk to you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Please be there. Hi, Mom. Uh, so I got my ticket home from Europe. I get back on June 6th, but it's a really late flight because that was the cheapest, so it gets in at midnight. But don't worry, I'll get a shuttle from the airport so you don't have to pick me up. Like, really seriously, you don't have to. Okay, so, love you. See you soon. It's one of the postcards I sent. Hi, Mom, Dad, and Sam. I'm in Paris. I've done many Parisian things, including eating le petit déjeuner and wearing a beret. I'm going to have lots of film to develop when I get back. Sam, I'm bringing you back something from the Shakespeare Book Company. Since you're my favorite sister, love you all, Katie. Okay, so sis Sam is my sister. That's at the new address. Okay. Read obituary. Uh, in the house it'll be his home. Oh, so is this the house that we're living in now? Probably. No, oh, his survi- No, okay, here's survivors include his nephew, Terence Greenbrier. So this was... The uncle of my father. I guess. I the cards. Interesting. This is Sam? No. DeSoto? It's not the same last name, so it might not, it's probably not Sam. Can I put it back nicely? Yeah, it's better. Anything else down here? Doesn't look like it. Alright. Got a little bit of an issue with the wallpaper over here. Quite a few really long hallways. What's it say? Welcome new students. Gotta bring a bunch of junk with you. Looks like we have everything except for a positive attitude. Please remember to get plenty of sleep the night before. Um, right? Oh my god, 
You are so lucky you finished high school before we moved into this house. So, it's the first day of school, and there I am, introducing myself to the class. And I say that I just moved into the house on Arbor Hill. All of a sudden, every kid in the room turns and just stares like I suddenly transformed into a mutant. I just stood there, pushing pretty hard for a rewind button. Because now maybe nobody knows my name, but they all know who I am. The Psycho House Girl. Great. Kids. Got some nice alcohol up there. Ugh. Distilled in Ireland. Irish whiskey. Interesting. Nothing I need to look at though. A lot of empty drawers too. Electrical inspection form. Uh, does the entire electrical system meet local codes? Yes. Are there any deficiency? Wiring in-house is technically up to safety and amperage requirements. However, multiple layers of wiring have been added into structure over the last 100 years. System is frequently unpredictable. Lights blink out for no reason. Pressure on floorboards and door frames disrupts circuit wi circuits wired directly behind the surface. Properly reworking the electrical system would be highly destructive to the walls, floor, and fixtures of the structure. After discussion with Mr. Greenbrier, since there are no current safety concerns, issues will not be addressed. Alright, sounds ticky-boo. Should be good to go, right? Just have some flickering lights for absolutely no reason. No books for me to look at either. Except for maybe this one? What's this one? The Killing of JFK. You've seen the movie Discover the Truth. Close enough. Intercombination. I do not know what the combination is. We'll come back to that maybe. Nothing in there, looks like. Nothing in there. Looks like I'll need the combo. Let's just turn all of the lights in the house on. John Russell opened his eyes and saw them, the stars, twinkling as if he were lying on the grass in his family's yard in Massachusetts, even though that place was a million miles away. No, he blinked the sleep from his eyes, looking through the carbon-reinforced safety glass of the space station Archimedes. Yes, he was a long way from home, but the future needed him. John Russell's head swam. He felt incredibly drunk, despite not having touched a drop in hours. He vomited onto his feet, his bare feet. He stared for a moment. Processing his sick flecked toenails, scanning up his bare shins, bare knees, he was completely naked. He looked up and met the eyes of a gorgeous blonde woman wearing a tight polymer fiber tunic. The fabric that strained at the seams to contain her generous bosom was emblazoned with the phrase Matter Transference Operator. Then he passed out. John Russell had crossed the gap, the gap in time. Only messages had passed before, but now, um, but now, oh man, they needed him. Now more than ever. Changing the past was no longer good enough. The instructions from the council had been clear what to procure, what to construct from it, and how to assemble it. So he made the machine, how to transport him bodily across time. And now he stood there on the bridge of the starship Archimedes, commander of the vessel, because only he who had saved the president's life twice before could helm the naive crew to their destiny, the fate of the galaxy. I mean, I've written worse. Three ring binder. Is there anything on it? No. What's this though? Yeah, yeah. It's a secret area. Terrence Greenbrier. Dear Terrence, I write on what I hope and imagine is a joyous occasion. News reaches me that you are newly married to a wonderful young woman. I've had more than a little time to consider. My past and my family and my thoughts have often lingered on your development and welfare in the ten years since we last met. Your marriage gives me much reassurance in this regard. You are always welcome on Arbor Hill. I will understand if you feel you swept... No, accept this invitation. Yours very sincerely, Oscar... Mason, I believe, which is the guy that died. Okay, that was two of two. And there was nothing. Ah, there's nothing else under the, the binder, right? Okay. 
close that, close that. So just put that right there. Looks totally fine. It's a glass. Examine paper. Pioneer CLD D703 combination laser disc compact disc player. Uh, they say a jack of all trades is a master of none. I have to disagree. Mastery is not a question of specialization, but sureness of purpose and dedication to craft. If you happen to be in the market for a combination LD CD player, you'll be glad to know the Pioneer seems to share this particular. Hmm. So writing uh, like reviews, pen, highlighter. Wait, I haven't checked this drawer yet, have I? Yeah, it looks like I have. Nothing in there. What's this? From the pen of Terence Greenbrier. Monogrammed paper. Nothing else really interesting there. Looks like we'll have to check in here. One just looks suspicious to me. Okay, it's just me. I feel like there's too many books to just inspect them all. So maybe I won't until I find reason to. I don't, I don't see what's in there. No, no. I want to see what's in there. Dad's second book. Oh, okay. The Accidental Pariah. Oh, okay, so was the uh, the other book in there his book as well? Gentlemen. Gosh, Dad. It's very well hidden. Well. Keep it tidy. Not much in here to look at. What's this? A stranger under my roof. Oh, yes. Dealing with teens. Definitely. Definitely something that you could use a guidebook for, although I don't know if it'll help. 0451. Alright. Dear Terrence, David asked me to write you regarding the reviews you've been submitting the last few months. Frankly, they're becoming more trouble than they're worth from an edi editing standpoint. There's a word limit. It's your job to stay under it, not mine to cut back to it. Even then, it's becoming harder and harder to weed out the tangents and non sequiturs from the usable coffee copy without heavy rewrites. The readers of Home Theater Aficionado want to hear about the quality and value of the hardware, not ruminations on your childhood. If it were up to me, I wouldn't be writing this letter. I'd just be cutting you loose. There's tons of guys half your age who would take half your rate to write stuff I could actually use, but David's known you for a long time, and he's the boss, so I'm giving you one more shot on his say-so. You should write him a nice note thanking him for his patience and generosity. Look through your old stuff and start submitting reviews like that again, then everybody will be happy. 0451. Okay. We'll try that out. Nice little plant. I don't know. It's probably fake. Because that's a really dark corner for a fern. Well, I guess ferns like the dark too. I was a teenage drag queen. The male gaze. Alright. Coaster. It's a nice little ginkgo leaf pattern. I don't know what I would do with the tissue box. 0451, right? We'll try that on the safe, or not safe, on the uh, locked cabinet here. Probably would have been faster to go the other way. Excellent. What do we have here? Dear Mr. Masson, please find and enclosed your original document and a typed copy for your records. The notarized copy has been filed at our offices. Thank you for entrusting our firm with this important manner. Interesting. Will and testament. Okay. Unmarried. Bequeath every item, including any surrounding acreage in the home, to Terence Greenbrier. Um, if he is to predecess me, bequeath to his children. Hmm. Will and testament. I, Oscar Masson, 
possessing full competence of mind and memory, and often full survey of valued oh, and after full survey of valued items to my name, do hereby declare this document my last will and testament. The following hold something holds time upon my a oh, hold true upon my passing. I declare that I am a lifelong resident of Boone County, that I am unmarried and I have no children. I declare that I have no outstanding death to my name. Hereby bequeathed to Terence. In the event that said Terence Greenbrier should predecess me, then and in such an event I bequeath the the be the behest no, the bequest to him hmm, shall fall, and the same is bequeathed to his children so ordered by age and competence no, oh, as stewards of the state. I subscribe my name to this will, this 13th day of August 1973. Interesting. Is that the only thing in this drawer? Hmm. Oh wait, was this his too? No. Benjamin Almond. Let's put that up there. So we've checked here, we've checked here. Still a bit more of this hallway and haven't gone that way either yet. What do we have here? Hey, are you the new girl Sam? I'm Tommy. I'm at the back behind you. Wave if you get this and right back. Hi Tommy. Yes, I'm Samantha. And yes, I'm new. What's up? I just thought since you're new maybe you could use a friend. I don't have a lot of friends either and so I thought I'd ask something if you don't mind me. Do you mind? Or if you don't mind, do you mind? No. No, I don't mind. What did you want to ask? Was it just your uncle who went psycho, or does it run in the family? Classy. Very nice. Children can be so nice. A lot of the same garbage cans. Cassettes. This is a severe weather. Hey man, how you been? I know you're a published author and everything now, but my editor at Hi-Fi Aficionado has too much review work to go around, and he's looking for another freelancer. Naturally, I thought of you. You were saying in your last letter how much of a pain it's been trying to find a publisher for your latest work of literature and writing stereo reviews is dead simple. Sit at home with a glass of scotch, listen to some records, and write up how it sounds, and then get paid. I've included some issues of the mag to use as an example. If you're interested, send some samples to my editor and tell him your old college chum Mike sent you. Here's the address. Okay. This is a weather. It's that dad that book wrote. Ah, the accidental savior. Hmm. Interesting. No, I want that lamp on. I do not want to turn it off. Beetlejuice, Robocop, Blade Runner, JFK, X-Files. Hmm. Andromeda Strain. A lot of stuff I recognize. We'll get to that in a sec. Press C or control to crouch. This is a severe weather The Northwest Weather Service reports high Haunting rain. and poltergeists. Hmm. It's a spooky book to be reading. Down in a little fort. What's this though? Coliseum. Pulp fiction. Alright. TV listing. X Files. Nothing in there. Let's put the coaster nice. Oh, and this one's got a fern on it. Bracken fern, if I'm not mistaken. Not sure. Bratmobile. Not much interesting in there. Severe weather warning. Sam, thought this might help. Making friends. Even when you're what? 
feeling lonely. Never worry again about having friends to spend time with. Oh, even when you're shy. You know that feeling where the first moment you see someone, it's like they have a big gold star around them, and you have to get to know them? Well, there's this girl. I think she's a senior. She's usually dressed kind of punk. But sometimes I see her in this, like, army uniform. And she's always drawing in this notebook, looking so intense. I had no idea how I would ever, like, have an excuse to talk to her. Till I noticed she and her friends hang out and play Street Fighter at the 7-Eleven every day after school. I know there's another letter I need to check, but I wanted to wait till that was done. The Heaven at the Edge of the World, Samantha Greenbrier, Grade 2, Story of the Turtle People, Part 1. Captain Allegra looked off at the ocean. It went on forever, or so it seemed. Some day she would find the edge and get to the paradise there. Then she heard a cannon fire. Boom! It was the Black Pirate ship. She yelled, I thought we lost them at Horse Island, the first mate said. Looks like you thought too soon. The black ship came up along the side. Captain Black himself came out on the deck of the black ship. He yelled to Captain Allegra, you're, n you're never gonna find the edge. There ain't no paradise and your father were a liar. Captain Allegra yelled back. Then why do you keep following us, you imbecile? The first mate yelled out. We'll stop you, Captain Black. We'll find the edge of the world and you'll see her father was no liar. The battle kept going until Captain Allegra's ship got away. Now west, she said, and they s the ship sailed towards the sunset. Hmm. Enclosed. Please find Pioneer CLDD703 unit with remote and cables. We need a half page review for the October issue, so that gives you about two weeks to get us the copy for edit. Standard stuff like you gave us for the CLDD502. It's a combi player, so check out its CD playback with a few discs as well as Laserdisc, and they want us to definitely hit the signal to noise ratio and TOS link stuff for high end buyers. Looking forward to your take on it. Enjoy the unit. Is the unit actually there? I just see chords. Where's the unit? Nothing else under those pillows. Yeah, I don't see the unit. It's alright, I guess. I would have lit the candles, but there was no matches left in the matchbook. Coupons? Tortilla chips. Examine pamphlet. United States Department of Agriculture. Forestry manual. Hmm. Nice and bright. Uh, one way to hide a cord, I guess. Reproductive System Worksheet 6. Samantha Greenbrier. Hmm. Menstrual cycle. It's very exciting. <laughs> Alright. What was the assignment? Below are two stories. The events are all out of order. Get a sheet of lined paper, write Reproductive System Worksheet 6 at the top, then choose one of the two stories and rewrite it. Begin with the title and your name. Find a topic sentence to begin your paragraph. Put the sentences in chronological order. Make sure the last sentence is a good concluding statement. Well then. The early morning of September 1st, 1939. Or is that 7? Essa Glatz stares out of the window of the train as it travels from Vienna back to her home village of Wailem in Poland. As the train rumbles along and the sun rises over the countryside, she can only think of her dear Borislav, the boy she's engaged to wed. Meanwhile, deep within her guts, an ovum starts to develop. As his train approaches its destination, her heart races. The lining of the uterus is getting thick and soft. As Essa steps off the train, her eyes dart quickly across the gathered crowd. Then there, her dear Boris, steel in his baker's smock, he must have dropped his early morning duties at his father's shop to come meet her. Her heart skips a beat. The ovary releases the ovum. It travels through the fallopian tube. 
Over the wheezing of the steam engine, a deep hum grows. It's coming from the sky. Dark shadows pass over the station, a whistling sound. Essa, her thoughts only a second faster than the bomb, reaches out towards her dear Boris across the crowd. Their eyes lock and the moment freezes. The flash and smoke envelops him almost instantly. In the assault by the German forces, almost 75% of the people in her hometown are killed. The rest, including Essa and, for a time, Borislav, huddle in a half-destroyed church. He's blind, his legs are missing, bandaged, and t with torn bedsheets. Essa's egg will not be meeting a sperm. It dissolves. About two weeks later, Boris loses his grip on life. Essa has given up her rations to keep Boris alive, but in the end, nothing can save him. Since the lining of the uterus is not needed for pregnancy, it comes out through the vagina. Essa vows to survive. She sets off to join the Polish resistance as a daring spy and saboteur. Another ovum starts to develop in one of the ovaries and the process begins again. It is incredible how the female body knows how to prepare for pregnancy. And as the teacher notes, see me.